Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to The Upper Hand. Today is our last video in our goniometry series, and today we're going to be covering shoulder range of motion. So if you happen to miss any of those, or you just need a refresher on the elbow, the wrist, the forearm, fingers, thumb, we've covered all of those and have separate videos for all of those. So make sure you go and check those out as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right guys, so first we're gonna do shoulder flexion. So for shoulder flexion measurements, you're gonna have the patient supine on a treatment plant typically. And so you're just gonna find your normal landmarks. And so I'm gonna put my axis of my goniometer right on the acromion process or the AC joint right there. And I'm going to want the stationary arm of the goniometer to be in line with the patient's trunk of their body. And then the movable arm will follow their humerus as they move into shoulder flexion. And just like with any other range of motion measurement, uh, you could range them, I have them actively or passively range first just to get an idea of where they're going to be at and get a functional movement. Um, and then you can place your goniometer. So the axis again will go right on the acromion or the AC joint area. Keep this stationary arm in line with the, the trunk. And then as they come up into shoulder flexion, you're going to allow this goniometer to, to follow the humerus, mid shaft of the humerus. And make sure that the axis does not migrate off of that AC joint area. Make sure you keep it centered as they come up into shoulder flexion. And then there's your measurement there. Okay, so next we're going to measure shoulder extension. Um, so for this, we're going to have the patient seated. It's just easier to measure than having them lying on uh, a mat or supine on a mat. Um, so we're going to have their arm resting down by their side. Um, first, let's talk about the goniometer and the placement of that. So the axis is going to, again, be right over the acromion process. You're going to have your stationary arm will stay in line with the trunk, and then your movable arm will uh, move along with the mid shaft of the humerus. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the patient, or Dylan here, to go ahead and reach behind him as far as he comfortably can. After he does that motion, I'm going to go ahead and come up here and place that right on the acromion process, make sure my stable arm is going straight to the floor, 90 degree angle, and then the movable arm will be placed right on the outside or right in line with the humerus. And you'll get the measurement of about 35 degrees. Okay guys, so next we're going to be working on measuring shoulder abduction or adduction, And so, Patient's going to be supine again, goniometer placement, let's go over that. So the axis of motion is at the AC joint, and so I would place the axis of the goniometer right over the anterior aspect of the AC joint there, um, and then I would have the stationary arm of the goniometer parallel to the patient's trunk, and then I would have the movable arm in line with the mid shaft of the humerus. Now one thing I'll note is that you notice in the other measurements we've covered in this video, that as the patient moved into position, I tried to follow it with the goniometer. It gets a little difficult sometimes, and sometimes you can kind of fumble around with the goniometer. You can do it that way, or if you prefer, you can have the patient go ahead and move into the desired position and then place the goniometer in place to, uh, to measure that motion. Just to make sure that your landmarks are, are in check and that your goniometer is placed correctly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and measure this. And one other thing to note is as the patient moves into shoulder abduction, make sure that they are thumb up coming into abduction and not thumb down. You know, in, the humerus is externally rotated so that they can get their full range of motion and so that they don't impinge here at the shoulder as they're moving up into abduction. So I'm going to have him move thumb up and go into shoulder abduction. And so now that he's in position, then I'm going to place the goniometer. So I'm going to place the axis of the goniometer right over the acromion area right here. And the stationary arm is going to be parallel to the trunk. And then the movable arm is going to be in line with the mid shaft of the humerus there. And there is your measurement for shoulder abduction or abduction, however you prefer to say that. All right, so next we're going to talk about uh, a, a shoulder motion that a lot of therapists do not typically measure in an eval. But I do want to mention it because if you happen to be a therapist that performs impairment ratings, then this measurement will be required. So this one is shoulder uh, horizontal adduction. So you'll ask the patient to reach out in front of them. Their shoulders are going to be flexed at 90 degrees. We're going to go ahead and place the goniometer right on top of that shoulder and then the chromium process. 
for this motion or measurement, the stable arm will be right in line with the humerus as they're at 90 degrees of flexion. The stable arm will stay in that place as the arm reaches across to the other side of their body and the movable arm will follow the mid shaft of the humerus. So go ahead and reach across your body, keeping that elbow, or even if the elbow bends, that's fine. You just know that you're only measuring. Uh, you're just keeping that movable arm in line with the mid shaft of the humerus. So, and you get that measurement of about, about 40 degrees there, 35, 40 degrees, which is, which is considered normal. Okay guys, so now we're going to work on shoulder internal and external rotation. So again, we'd have the patient lying supine for this measurement and I'm going to bring them out into shoulder abduction and have them place their forearm in this position here. And for the goniometer placement for this, the axis should be right over the olecranon process here at the bottom of the screen. And the stationary arm will actually stay perpendicular to the patient or straight up and down as much as possible in a vertical position. And we're going to measure internal rotation first. And so for that movement, uh, you would have the movable arm of the goniometer follow their forearm or their ulna along the mid shaft of their ulna as they come into internal rotation. Now, before I actively measure that, um, I would have the patient actively move into internal and external rotation again, just to get a general idea of how they're going to move and how far they'll move. And after they've done that, again, place the axis over the electronon process, keep the stationary arm vertical, and then have them move into internal rotation and let that movable arm with the goniometer follow the ulna. And there's your internal rotation measurement. One other thing I would mention is that with internal ex internal rotation, uh, some people don't have a lot of that. And so sometimes you see them compensate with internal rotation by lifting their shoulder off the mat. And you can see I just got a lot of internal rotation, but it's not actual internal rotation because they're compensating with the shoulder. So you may have to ensure that their shoulder stays down by holding it with your other hand or just verbally cue the patient to keep their shoulder down as they move into inter internal rotation. For external rotation, the goniometer placement will be the same essentially. You're going to have the axis of motion will be obviously right there at the electronon process of the elbow. And then you're going to keep the stationary arm vertical and then you're going to allow the movable arm of the goniometer to follow mid shaft of the ulna as the patient moves into external rotation. And as they move, make sure that the axis remains in the same position. And so allow the patient to move into external rotation. And there's your measurement there. And uh, one interesting thing to note with internal and external rotation specifically, uh, with baseball players, you see it a lot. Sometimes they have a lot more external rotation than internal rotation as Parker has shown here. This is internal rotation. So let's measure that just, just to see where we're at. So go ahead and move into internal rotation there. So for internal rotation, I've got maybe 30 degrees there, right at 30, and then have him move into external rotation. And I'm going to follow back. And for external, I've got right at 110 degrees of external rotation, which is a little more than typical, but it's commonly seen with baseball players. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, the upper hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.